Hello everyone, Kenty Tiger here with Bengali Engineering and Play. We are back in Space Engineers, continuing on in the basic survival tutorial. And uh, we are currently doing some base building, which is actually the second part of the base building section of this tutorial. So uh, we turn around here and we have, uh, starting to get shadowed, but we have this, uh, this mock up of everything you'll need in your base. Uh, so we are kind of following this uh, somewhat religiously uh, to give us, uh, let's say, a check sheet of what we need. So uh, the things that we have uh, accomplished so far is uh, storage. Um, so I guess uh, if I were to to say uh, the process of elimination as as it were um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, and do that um, have some fun while we're doing it I guess um, may or may not be close enough uh, I think I think not um, So what I am doing here is uh, setting a uh, small container or a large container. Um, So the, the idea here is, uh, and, and what I could really do, um, I'm going to have to turn on Space Master to do this, um, but here, here's what we're going to do. Uh, so we're going to uh, control X this, uh, which is going to get rid of it, and uh, we're going to uh, paste it. Um, let's see if I can get myself out of the way here. Um, we're going to paste it a little bit close, uh, hopefully without getting it too close. Um, all right. So uh, if all goes well, which it looks like it is, um, then it will dismantle these pieces uh, as we build them. Now, the reason I'm having it grind all those down is because we have added them in. So this I'm using kind of as a as a visual check sheet uh, of our progress. Uh, so basically, when this whole piece is gone, then uh, I will be able to say we're done um, so here's uh, this is also here and we are currently working on uh, these parts right now problem because this is going to fall down go boom all right um so what i did off screen uh, off camera here was um did some prettying up uh having a 
just sharp edge is uh, maybe not uh, the most elegant. Uh, so what I did is my standard, uh, you know, putting a, an angled corner here um, and then uh, put it all the way around the bottom. But I don't know what all we're going to do on this end yet. So while I put this out here, we may actually change it. Um, but in the interim, we need uh, oxygen generators and here's what I came up with as far as what I think my scheme will be uh, so this is basically going to be a utility room and speaking of that one of the other things I did was uh, actually name the doors on the airlocks uh, so we have four airlocks at this point so eight doors total um, obviously we need a door on each side for it to truly be an airlock um, and thinking about it. Let me turn this off before this gets me into trouble. Um, so one of the other things that I need to do in this space is uh, pressurize it. Um, so originally I was thinking I would uh, put those up here, but I think I'm actually going to uh, put them up here. Um, well, let me see. I'm going to do one there, uh, and we'll go ahead and put one up here. A little bit hard to see, granted. Um, not sure how many, if I really wanted to go equidistant here, how would I be able to do that? So can I do it every, every three? Uh, well, we have a two in the middle, but it's a three, a three, two, three. So I think I think we'll live with that. Um, so what did I want to do here? I want to put um, oxygen generators down, or rather uh, gas generators. Um, I'm going to put two sets in here, and. Uh, will actually be um, and I'm I'm gonna put these upside down and this may may get me into trouble uh, maybe not uh, maybe we'll put them here And then we will continue on with uh, these guys in the center, which connect everything laterally, even though the oxygen generators are rather the, um, the gas generators already, already are. Uh, and we're going to continue on to this side with tanks. Uh, so I put two sets of tanks over here and the reason I did that um, was because this is up against the door um, so if we if we go over here and look so we have the door here we have a programmable block which is ultimately for um, the LCDs because I, I like LCDs um, so we have two tanks and then two tanks and then uh, over here, uh, we're going to put more tanks. Now, do we need this many tanks? The answer is probably no. Um, but um, there's space for them. Uh, and other than putting like more batteries or something over here, I'm not sure I really have anything else to go here. So this is a little bit overkill. Um, but um, if we have the resources, might as well. Uh, all right. So uh, now that all of those are in, then we are uh, really 
you're just putting in um, bulkhead. Again, not sure entirely what's going to happen with this space on this side. Um, I mean, ideally, I would like to put um, like hangar doors in um, and have a space where we can put smaller craft. Um, but that may be something we want to do at the other end. Um, so this may end up being maybe this base is only that wide um, you know or there's nothing wrong with having a just for now blank space um, yeah. it'd be simpler to uh, grind grind it down myself but hey all right um, So that basically uh, added the bulkhead there. So now we have those two rooms are entirely uh, sealed. Uh, now one of the things that we need to do is, um, all right, let's go ahead and uh, judiciously grind here. Um, so this should be. So this one here, oops. Uh, so the idea here is that we're going to need to carry our conveyor system out into the rest of the base. And uh, this is how we will do that and connect the conveyor system in. Uh, so uh, back on to number two, uh, we'll put uh, a block back in here, uh, and then uh, we'll put a conveyor there, and a conveyor there, which, uh, which should let us uh, connect in whatever we're going to do on this side. Um, the utility room here, which is on this side, is what is not sure what's there we go. quick save. Um, the utility room here is going to be pressurized and connected in uh, via everything going on on this side. The only thing that we need to do. Um, Maybe um, uh, is really connect in right there. Um, so let's uh, let's add another 
uh, conveyor junction here. Uh, and in fact, um, let's see, we have a tank and then uh, the conveyor should be there. So it gives us a little bit of flexibility. But what I forgot here uh, is we are not yet connected side to side. So uh, one of the things I want to do, and it's kind of a variable how we do that, um, so here's the good news. This single indicator is green. And what that really means is that we are compartmentalized. So this space is actually sealed to the environment, which is, which is a good thing. That's, that's what our goal was. Um, so in our case here, um, we're going to add um, these two items. Now, normally I go for a bit of redundancy, but the only way I'm going to really do redundancy on this end uh, would be to come through this bulkhead in some way. And the problem with coming through the bulkhead um, is I don't really have an effective methodology to do that. But, having said that, uh, what we could do is actually add an auxiliary uh, mechanism. Uh, this is going to look a little strange, so bear with me. Um, but we put in, and this is, you know, after the fact, uh, kind of engineering as you go. Um, we'll, we'll put two conveyors here um, because conveyors are airtight, which is what I want. Um, and then we do a curved conveyor uh, and another curved conveyor which is going to face this way and then uh, get myself out of the way here and then uh, connect this in here. Now is this truly redundant? No, because ultimately if there's a break anywhere on this end, then I could disconnect this here, uh, which is not, not a good thing. Um, uh, hopefully we're still green. Yes, we are. Um, now the other thing you notice is uh, even though I have the 10 generators here, uh, none of them are working. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because I don't have any ice in this system yet. So the only way I could really get ice into this system is to either connect it into the other system, uh, which may be something to do, uh, or uh, get ice and bring it over. Uh, to that end, uh, let's go ahead and uh, add our first um, connector on here. So I like to go out at least three. And the reason I say three uh, is because, well, if you play bumper cars, uh, then you're bound to destroy something. And I would rather destroy something cheap like a conveyor uh, than the bulkhead, possibly a storage unit, because if that, if that storage container blows up, I lose a portion of what's in it. And uh, the possibility, which used to happen, it doesn't happen as often anymore, is just the fact that you now have all these components rattling around destroys other things which means you could catastrophically chain react to disaster uh, and in the process lose an awful lot of of your uh, components uh, which you you never want to do so uh, let's go ahead and add that uh, 
connector on there. Uh, we're going to go down here and have a look and see what we are missing. And uh, queue them up. So we press K. Uh, hey, construction components again. We can actually get to it from here. Um, all right, construction components, which are here. And we'll do 5,000 of those. We need iron ingots for that. And hopefully that will, uh, that will do what we need it to do. Alright, so this is uh, undoubtedly called Connector, which it is. Alright, so uh, one of the things I've done here, um, so this is uh, Utility Room 01, that was a Control C, um, Control A, Control V, and that's a 2. Control A and V, and that's a three. Uh, control A, Control V, and that is a four. Uh, so these are all of my vents that I am uh, adding in as we go, and then putting them into their respective groups. So oxygen generators here, uh, or the uh, the gas generators, uh, and I'm going to call them uh, gas generators. Generatros. Uh, and we do not need those on the toolbar, but they do have an inventory, and we're going to take them off the, uh, the terminal. Uh, that's a one. We're going to go ahead and take all of these up to and including the hydrogen tank. Uh, and the reason I'm selecting also the hydrogen tank, um, it, because I, I'm going to put those off the toolbar, and then I'm going to just call these uh, tanks uh, H2 uh, and O2. And do a save, so that creates the group, and then we're going to turn them off on the terminal. So what I'm trying to do really is just uh, clean all of this up a little bit. Um, so I like to have groups, and I just noticed that's AIT vents. So let's call this air vents, how about? Uh, and then we can delete the other one. So that might be uh, worthy of note. If you select a group, and then you change something in here and do a save, it actually creates another identical group. So, uh, for example, let's go ahead and, and bring all that in on the terminal. Uh, we'll deselect. But if you notice, so this is everything that's in that group. Um, so even though I didn't create this group, all I did was do a rename and a save, it recreates that group identically, including everything that's in it, which is to say all of the grouping parameters, namely all of my air vents, uh, will show up in this new group. Uh, so you can safely delete the old one after you've created that new group. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you can select things, then control select your group that you wanted in and do a save because it's the same name it just basically adds the other things to it so in this case uh, terminal off which takes those back off the screen back off the terminal uh, and all we have is this outer connector uh, and the program block programming block and we will eventually add some uh, some LCDs all right so what I want to do here is uh, we should have 
uh, a bit of ice. Um, so let's do an inventory and uh, look for, we have ice here. Uh, we actually are, are going to be far in excess of what I can carry. Um, uh, so inventory, we're looking for a large cargo container, which is there. And uh, all that should just uh, vanish very quickly. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the good news here is that our conveyor system is working. So I can not only get from this connector uh, to the containers, but we also prove from the containers over to the far side um, where our oxygen generators are, which are in this room over there. So this is good news. It, that, that was a good test of everything that was going on. Uh, but I am going to do this again, uh, grab more ice, Energy put more low. ice up here, inventory, drop that into cargo container one, it should disappear, which it does. So we at least have a couple of the gas generators, uh, which will be working. Right, that should be uh, all there if we can find more. There's a bit more there. Container. Being as we have, you know, ten gas generators will probably not have enough ice here to, to do anything. Inventory, inventory. Four more ice, which is there. And a whole bunch of ice here. So we want to leave that there, but let's go ahead and fill that and then take another massive amount. I put uh, a lot of uranium into the reactors already, so they, they are operational and running. Um, inventory. And back in the cargo container one. Alright, so just for fun, let's go ahead and look at our generators now. We're uh, using stuff pretty fast. Oh wow, okay, they did all actually fill. So they can only take so much, which is which is actually really neat. But they are working hard. So all ten of them are generating, which is great. Um, but we have a ways to go. So uh, let me grab a couple more uh, loads of. Do a quick save there. Uh, inventory. Scroll down here for more ice. quickly of course once we fill up all the tanks then everything will be good okay. uh, all right So it looks like uh, we filled up everything. So let's go ahead and, and look at the tanks. We'll uh, put those tanks back on for a second. So 100% uh, filled. 100%, 100%, 100%. All right. So the good news is, is all of our tanks are now full, which means our generators have gone to idle, which is good. Um, that was a good thing. that are 
Yeah. Uh, should have taken care of everything. Yep. Right. All right. Um, now, one of the things to consider is where to land everything. And the reason I didn't punch holes in the roof here and set up um, connectors was because I don't know what all this space is going to be. So uh, do I create a barracks back here uh, and then have this open for, um, you know, other... Uh, do I put a hangar bay out here? You know, what, what do I do? Do I put a landing pad? Uh, do I want a landing pad on the roof? Uh, you know, what do I really want to do in terms of I put stuff in? Now, having said that, um, we have not yet created um, a refinery room. So there may be, uh, maybe we want to put refineries. This, this may be actually a good room, uh, a good space uh, to put our refineries. So uh, what I'm going to do... Um, so this is a uh, yield module. Um, we need uh, the yield module facing this direction. Uh, and for every refinery, we end up with, uh, with four of these. Um, what I'm considering here is how do I want to interconnect? And I think I'm going to back off one um, and, and here's why that I'm going to grind and remember our tank is right here so our coupler or, or rather our uh, junction is right here our conveyor so what we want to do is have some way to interconnect on both ends so we have a little bit of redundancy. So in this case, uh, we want a conveyor junction here. And then um, we will have um, down. this on here uh, which goes here and then this which will then connect into the, uh, the refinery all right uh, four so we'll paste on more of these guys one two three four uh, oops So uh, four refineries, or maybe we'll go ahead and put five. There is room in this room uh, for them, so why don't we go ahead and do it? Uh, you can really never have uh, too many refineries. Um, we're going to do uh, effectively the same thing here. We're going to grind a hole, uh, and our conveyor should be right here. back over to uh, conveyor, uh, then put an elbow facing down, um, I can't see which way this is facing. Alright, now we may change this a little bit because ultimately 
uh, in this same room, we're going to have um, our assembler array. Um, but uh, three, uh, we need to get this uh, pointed in here in the right direction here. Uh, so I know that is a little bit off. It's upside down. So refinery Energy. here in this case, uh, I want to put that all the way on the ground like that. Uh, so I should be able to paste that in. Yep. And then uh, another one. And another one. And another one. And one last one, which then will connect everything across. There it is. Oh, those built really quickly. And coupled in. All right. Um, more doors. I can figure out where I put them. Really right here. So there's uh, doors, which is ultimately going to be uh, airlocks on that end, and then an uh, airlock on this end. And then let's uh, work on our bulkhead here. Sorry about that phone call. All right, um, so this, uh, this becomes our outer edge, so it actually did uh, work out uh, almost uh, identically to, to what we thought it would be. Um, so making it where it was, um, flip that one around. So, grinding methodology two.
out to the end here and end up creating the bulkhead here. Whoops, bounced, bounced off of that. So the good news is, um, speaking of grinding, we now have uh, everything set up here for, uh, or rather the space set up here for uh, the refineries, which are here. The refinery itself, uh, and in fact, um, uh, we haven't uh, haven't seen it yet. Uh, we actually uh, have the space set up for our assemblers. And what I mean by the space set up is uh, so we have a three by three um, area here, and uh, I know that's a little hard to see. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to change this piece out on both ends to a junction, and we're going to go up. So, uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to do a P and change to our grind color, which is already set. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select a 6. Uh, we're going to grind that. We'll go all the way down here and grind this and uh, then put in a junction. There's the junction there and the junction there. I suppose if we're going to be structurally sound, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, at the same time, we will um, go ahead and grind a hole right there, and then uh, we'll add in another here. So this will be another connector on this end. Right. And then let's do the same thing over here. So we need a six. Um, This one will be in the bulkhead. All right. Um, the next thing we need uh, is our assembler. All right. So uh, I'm arbitrarily setting that right side up. So uh, assembler, assembler, assembler. And it all worked out to the right length, which is awesome. So we have a five assembler array. Now the neat thing about five assemblers, assemblers when you connect them end to end, they can function cooperatively. 
They will not function cooperatively any other way than end to end. Um, so the other thing, so now we have completed, uh, we don't need batteries anymore, we don't need storage anymore, uh, don't need large reactor because we have all those. Yield modules and refineries are all out of here. Um, uh, and in fact, our assembler. So all blocks, if we uh, look back here, we have a speed module. Uh, and a power efficiency module. So the efficiency modules I tend to not use, um, no and, and there's nothing wrong with using them. Uh, if you have limited power, they're awesome. Uh, but in this case, uh, I need, I, I want speed on my assemblers. So I want my assemblers to be able to, uh, to really rock and roll when they set out to do something. So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, kind of paste all these in one at a time. Um, so this is going to be the top, um, top module, top module, and then I'll, I'll change orientation and come back. So top module. All right, and then we'll go on this side and set these guys up for this one. Uh, so that is speed module on the side. Side. Now, I guess I'm already here, so I might as well put the ones on the bottom. And then we'll put the ones on that other side. Get over here. this thing totally around there. there oh darn not what I wanted to have happen there uh, so and this guy change colors Fixed my oops. So uh, that is our uh, assembler array. So now five assemblers and all connected in uh, to function. So now we can put our bulkheads up. The only thing we are missing uh, in this case is air vents. Uh, so let's go ahead and put um, it consistent with the rest of the rooms. Um, We'll add in uh, two uh, air vents on each uh, end. So we have an air vent there and an air vent there. And then uh, we will put our outer bulkhead in which is just a matter of time.
right, and then get the last last two uh, blocks there. some roof here. No energy. Oh darn. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do while I've still got uh, no bulkheads here. So, um, door 12. And, and we're going to call this uh, 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 production. This is the B side, and the reason I called this the B side was because the A side is the base side. So, um, and this is the outer door. Um, that's control C. Uh, darn it. Close that door. Um, This will be the production B side, uh, but the inner door. And close. And we'll do the same thing here. So this is a inner close and a outer no capitalization there we go and close all right so uh, assemblers refineries four doors. Uh, I already have a group so we're going to turn those off on the toolbar and uh, sliding doors saves and off on the bar. All right. Um, production 01 so let's go ahead and uh, see. So this is production 2 production three and production four and then those also will toolbar and then save and off all right so we have our assemblers production assemblers uh, we're going to go
go ahead and save. So the group is saved. We're going to turn those off on the toolbar because they're in a group. And we're going to turn those off on the terminal. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here with refineries. It's called uh, production refineries. Uh, save off on the toolbar, uh, off on the terminal. Uh, all of my different modules here, there's a bazillion of them, are going to go into a group uh, called systems upgrade. Save. And uh, then off on the toolbar and off on the terminal. All right. So at this point, um, all we have to do is uh, seal up this bulkhead. No energy. left here is uh, this stuff here so let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna cheat a little bit uh, we're gonna have it uh, cut through and uh, as it cuts through we'll uh, create a completely independent grid and then uh, color the whole thing even though um, once the grid became independent it is now not owned by anything so it's owned by nobody and it automatically starts uh, dismantling this is probably heavy armor all right so all we have left is our living area and any defensive capabilities that we might want to have uh, so uh, having said all that, pre-planning for our future here, we now have the three rooms. Uh, so we have our storage room, we have our utility room, which contains our power and batteries, as well as our gaseous generation. So uh, really it's oxygen storage, because we only have the single tank for hydrogen. And the reason I did that was because, in the grand schemes of things, um, the only use of hydrogen, as far as storage goes, is going to be uh, your suit. Uh, so the ability of the medical stations uh, to fill up your suit or refill your suit, uh, it can draw off of that hydrogen tank, which is interconnected into the conveyor system. Uh, that's the only need for it. Uh, unfortunately, because tanks don't really work like tanks uh, in a grid, then we don't really need a bazillion hydrogen tanks to aid us in refilling uh, our, our tanks in our vessels. Uh, it just doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So uh, until it does, then all we can really do uh, is build the tanks on the bases that we need on the bases. So just for our immediate on-grid needs. All right, so this, I think, is a great place to stop. Uh, I am so close to an hour. Uh, we're not going to screw up our perfect record of going over the hour. Uh, so we're going to go under. So this is Kenty Tiger signing off. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.